My name is... Oh my god, stop. <laughs> you kind of brought that on the show. Hi everyone, my name is Ben Mistroli. I am the co-president of the Garden Valley Drama Club along with Megan Arthurs. And I... And I am Evan Vanderbilt, co-vice president of the Drama Club along with Cecilia Michelli. First off... Oh yeah, come on, clap for yeah. Cecilia, you want to get out here? Yeah, where's Cecilia? She's back there. Get Cecilia out here. Here's our hey! Oh, my God, no. 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 All right. No one else. Um, we have been the leaders of the drama club this year, and it has been such a pleasure for us to be here. Um, first things first, welcome to our production of Chorus Line. <laughs> Um, please make sure all electronic devices are turned off, and I'm serious, turn them off, please, because they distract with microphones, and then we get feedback, and it's not good. Yes. Also, no, okay, you want to say that? Next, we would like to say no flash photography, it is a distraction to the people on stage. This performance of a chorus line is performed in two acts at the end of Act 1. There will be an intermission that is 20 minutes, you can get concessions and use the restrooms. Uh, we would also like to give a couple thank you. Thank you to, obviously, Mrs. Arters, the director, who does just amazing things for us. Yeah, Thank you to everybody that helps with stage crew, like Mr. Arters, Russ, and Mrs. Unstead, the pit, Mrs. Thomas, Mrs. Gotek with the props, Ms. Gina with the dancing, just everybody. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> There are a, a couple of haze effects in this show, and don't worry, it is just water vapor. It should not cause any allergic reaction, and if it does, you're allergic to water, I would go see a professional about that. Um, we're like mostly made of it, that's the problem. <laughs> and next, we would just like to say that it's a PG-13 show, so keep that in mind. Oh, also, yeah, yeah, one more final thing. If you look in your program, the last number of the show are the vows, so just keep that in mind. All right, so sit back, relax, enjoy a course like any kind of reverses. Why for Gordon Valley in 79! Again! Step, kick, kick, leap, kick, touch! Again! Step, kick, kick, leap, kick, touch! Again! Step, kick, kick, leap, kick, touch! Number 23 upstage. 23. 
Judy Turner. 23. Right, okay, six left girls. Second group, number 37, downstage. Number 60, upstage. How many people does he need? How many people does he need? I hope I get it. How many boys are ready to Look at all the people. Look at all the people. How many people does he need? How many boys are ready to How many people does he need?
combination. <laughs> well, I knew it when I was in the front.
today, I want to know your real name, your stage name if it's different. I also want to know where you were born and how old you are. Being polite doesn't interest me. Your age does. And I want to know your age, so let's start on the end of the line, stage right. 28? No, start with your name and step forward. <laughs> Don Kerr, Kansas City, Kansas. Good. Next. Maggie Winslow. Louder. Maggie Winslow! Also known as Margaret Margie, Peggy, all of you above. Whatever, it's real and I was born in San Mateo, California, August 17th, 10.40 p.m. on a Tuesday evening. And I'm 25. I'm Mike Costa, used to be Costa Poloni. I was born in Trenton, New Jersey on the 4th of July. I'm 24. Next. Connie Wong. It's always been Connie Wong. I was born in China, Louise Side. Wait, how old are you? Kiwanis Wong. Uh, December 5th. 4,642, the year of the chicken. Okay, next. My name is Sidney Kenneth Beckenstein. My Jewish name is Rockmel Lev Yakov Meyer Beckenstein. My stage name is Gregory Gardner. I'm very excited here not tonight, and I'm 32. Cassie, Doc, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Well, I meant privately. Well, not right now. I'm already running about an hour behind. Well, I know, but Next. I... Next. I'm Sheila Bryant. My real name is Sarah Rosemary Bryant, which I really hate. I was born in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I'm going to be 30 real soon, and I'm real glad. <laughs> I'm Robert Charles Henry Joseph Mills III. That's my real name, too. I was born in upstate New York, near Buffalo. I can't remember the name of the town. I blocked it out. I'm 25. Uh, my name is B.B. Bensonheimer, and yeah, I know, I've got to change that. I'm 22, I come from Boston, and here I am! <sighs> Hi, I'm Judy Turner. My real name is... Tina Turner. <laughs> no, no, it's Judy Turner. I'm 26. Oh, and I'm from El Paso. El Paso, Texas. Good. Next. My name is Richie Walters, and I'm 27. I was born on a full moon in Herculaneum, Missouri. And I'm black. <laughs> I'm Alan DeLuca. I'm 30 years old. I come from the Bronx. Ooh. I'm Christine Yurick, Christine Evelyn Yurick, and I'll be 23 on September 1st. Tell them where you're from. Oh, and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, and my married name is DeLuca. Oh, I didn't know. Congrats. Thanks. Next. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I'm Valerie Clark. But my parents seem to think I'm Margaret Mary Bullingham. Oh, could you just die? I was born in the middle of nowhere, a little town called Arlington, Vermont. Goodbye. Wait, how old are you? Old. No, I'm 25. Yeah. Uh, Mark Anthony, really Mark Philip Vincent DeCorey, Tempe, Arizona, and I'm 20. Oh, Jesus. And if I get this job, I work real hard. <laughs> my name is Paul San Marco. That's my stage name. My root name is Efran Ramirez. I come from Harlem, and I'm 27. My name's Diana Morales, and I didn't change it because I figured ethnic was in. And I'm 27, you got that? And I was born on a Hollywood bed in the Bronx. Woo! Go on, Diana. Go on what? Oh. Oh, you want to know the color of my eyes? Or how tall I am? Or how many shows I've been in? I just need my picture and resume. Everything you want to know is right there. Yeah, I know. Now tell me what's not on it. Like what? Talk about yourself. Talk about what? Tell me about the Bronx. What's to tell about the Bronx? It's uptown and to the right. Well, what did you do there? In the Bronx? Mostly just wait to get out. Why didn't you start dancing? I don't know. I'm Puerto Rican. I have rhythm. Okay. No, well, I used to love to dance. Listen, if you give me a scene to act, I can act. I can perform. But I just can't talk. Please, 
I'm too nervous. Then relax. Look, I don't mind talking. I just don't want to go first. Please? You want this job, don't you? Sure I want the job. Okay, Diana, back in line. Before we do any more dancing, and we will be dancing some more, let me explain something. I am looking for a strong dancing chorus. I need people that look terrific together and that can work well as a group. But there are some small parts that have to be played by the dancers I hire. Now, I have your pictures and resumes, I know what shows you've been in, but that's not going to help me. And I don't think giving you just a couple lines to read is going to help much either. Instead, I think it would be better if I knew something about you, about your personalities. So, I'm going to ask you some questions. I want to hear you talk. Treat like an interview. I don't want you to think you have to perform. I just want to hear you talk and be yourselves. And everybody, just try and relax as much as you can. Sheila? How many people do you want? Oh, four and four. Forty-four? No, four and four. Four boys, four girls. Um, do you need any women? Okay, uh, Mike, I'll start with you. <laughs> Me? Don't you want to start at the end? No, I'll start with you. And relax. <laughs> I could if you started at the end. <laughs> what do you want to know? What do you want to tell me? I'd like to tell you to start at the end. <laughs> I can't think of a thing. Yes, you can. Look, why did you start dancing? Oh, because my sister did it. I come from this big Italian family. My grandmother was always hanging out of a window, leaning on a little pillow. Cause that's what I tell you grandmothers do, they hang out of windows. I was the last of 12. I was an accident. Well, at least that's what my sister told me. Oh, that was the sister Rosalie. She's the one that started taking dance lessons. My mother would take her every Saturday and she'd bring me along. I liked going. How old were you? Four. I'd sit there all perky and I'm watching Cisco pit a pat. Said, I can do that. I can do that. Knew every step right off the bat. Said, I can do that. I can do that. One morning, sis won't go to dance class. I grab her shoes and tight some more. But my foot's too small, so I stuff her shoes with extra socks. Run seven blocks in nothing flat. I got to class and had it made And so I stayed The rest of my life All thanks to the city Now Mary is back Did that bother you? No. I figured let them say what they want. Yeah, I don't buy that much. Well, sure it bothered me. I didn't want anybody calling me Twinkle Toes just because it was a couple dance lessons. Okay, Mike. Back in line. Okay, Bobby, you're on. Well, actually, I don't know how I turned out as heavenly as I did. You see, when I was five, I was playing with jacks, and the car fell out of my head. Bobby, are you going to do a routine? No, 
No. Moving right along. Moving along. Let's see. Do you want to hear about all the wonderful and exciting things that have happened to me in my life? Or do you want to know the truth? I'll take the truth. Well, to begin with, I grew up in this quasi-middle upper or upper middle class family type home. I could never figure out which, but it was real boring. <coughs> I mean, we had money, but no taste. You know the type of house? AstroTurf on the patio? Anyway, my mother used to love to throw a lot of card parties and was one of the foremost bridge, bridge cheaters of America. My father used to work for this big corporation. They used to send him out to the field a lot to drink. Better that than to find him lying on his office floor. But he was okay. I was the strange one. How strange? Real, real strange. I used to love to give garage recitals. Bizarre recitals. This one time, I did Frankenstein as a musical. I spray painted this kid silver all over. They had to rush him to the hospital because he had that thing where your pores came free. He lived. Because luckily I didn't paint the soles of his feet. And. And. What if I'm next? What if I'm next? What am I gonna do? I haven't got a clue. I better think of something. What does he want? What does he want? Stories from the past. I better find one fast. Stranger and stranger. I used to love to go to this busy intersection by my house and direct traffic. I just wanted to see if anyone would notice me. Oh, and um, that's when I started painting into people's houses. Oh, I didn't steal anything. I just liked to rearrange the furniture. And. And. Orphan at three, orphan at three, mother and dad both gone. Raised by a sweet ex-con, packed up at home at seven. Seriously, seriously, nothing to obscene. I'd better keep it clean. What should I say? What can I tell him? School? You want to hear about school? I went to PS shit. You see, I was that kid who's always getting stuff in the lockers. Not just by the students, but by the teachers too. Oh, and I hated sports. Hated sports. And sports were very big there. I mean, it was Jock City, but I couldn't make one team. You see, I couldn't catch a ball if that Elmer's blue on it. And one of my father had to be this biggest football hero. He was so humiliated, he didn't know what to tell his friends. So he told them all I had. Polio. On Father's Day, I used to live for him, like, uh, and... Uh, try, uh, 
Why are you in the business? Well, I want you to be a prima ballerina. That white. What color is that? Do you want me to make softer? Don't worry about it. Thank you. Don't worry about the lights. Just talk. Well, like I said, I wanted to be a ballerina. Because my mother was a ballerina. Until my father made her give it up. Sheila, come downstage. Closer. Can I sit on your lap? Do you always come on like this? No. Sometimes I'm aggressive. Actually, I'm a Leo. And what's that supposed to mean? Oh, it just means that the other 11 months should watch out. I'm very strong. Maybe too strong. What, am I doing something that you don't like? Because you told us to be ourselves. Yeah, just tone it down. Tone what down? Your attitude? Tell me about your parents. My parents? Your father? Him? Your mother. Oh, my mother! Well, my mother was raised like a little nun. She couldn't go out. I mean, she couldn't even bake. Kayla, what? don't perform. Just talk. Well, my mother became a ballerina and she got all of the scholarships and all that. And then when she got married, my father made her give it up. Isn't this just so exciting? And then she had this daughter, me. And she made her what she wanted to be. And she was fabulous in the way she did it. Would you like to know how she did it? Yes. But first, your hair. What? Like it? No. Let it down. Well, that's what I've been trying to do. <coughs> Better? Better. Go on. Oh, right. How she did it. Well, first she took me to see all the ballets. And then she gave me her old toe shoes, which I used to run down the sidewalk in. On my toes. At five. And then she took me to see the red shoes. And I wanted to be like that lady. Like that red head. And when my mother saw how much I had to dance, she said, you can't dance until you're eight. Well, by then I was only six. And I said, but I've got to dance. I mean, I can't get out of the house. What? Nothing. No, what did you say? I just said I wanted to get out of my house. Why? The truth. Sure. You're strong enough. Well, let's face it. My family scene was, uh, not good. Daddy always thought Daddy married to me. And that's what he said. That's what he said. When he proposed, he informed my mother he was probably her very last chance. And though she was 22, though she was She married him. Like if my dad wasn't ever a picnic, more like a come as you are. When I was five, I remember my mother dog earrings out of the car. I knew that they were in hers, but it wasn't something he wanted to discuss. He wasn't warm. Well, not to her. Well, not to us. Mother always 
said I'd be very attractive when I grew up, when I grew up. Different, she said, but only special something and a very, very personal flair. Though I was eight or nine, though I was eight or nine, though I was eight or nine, I hated her. Now, different is nice. Touch the 
the back of my head and he said, this little girl could be a star. I don't know if it was the look on my face or the fact that I wouldn't let go of his leg, but my mother could see how much it meant to me. I mean, I watched everything on TV that a dancing did, especially um, every Sunday. It was uh, every Sunday. Ed Sullivan. Right, Ed Sullivan. Every Sunday, like church. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I'm sorry. It's, I'm, I'm terribly nervous. That's all right. Just take a minute and um, pull yourself together. For her, this is together. He's right. But anyway, I guess I always knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like all those people in the movies. Only it's funny, I never wanted to be Ann Miller. I wanted to be Doris Day. Except I had this little, uh... Problem. See, I really couldn't sing. I could never really sing. What I couldn't do was... Sing! I have trouble with that. No. It goes all hard on my no. It's It's terrifying. No. See, I really couldn't hear, which no one... Why I disappear if someone said, let's start a wire. Hey, when I think it's a shrink, it's a cross between a shrink and a quiver or a hum. It's a little like a hum, like the record player. Hum. What it doesn't have is hum. And I know you're thinking, what a crazy But I really couldn't sing. I could never really sing. think what I couldn't do was. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells. This really blows my mind. She gets depressed. <laughs> but what I lack in pitch, I sure make up in power. And all my friends say I am perfect for the shower. Still, I'm terrific at it. Yes. These guys are going in there. Yes. I'm a pretty on the way.
to a doctor down the block. Sure enough, acute appendicitis. They rushed me right to the hospital. Well, I figured this book could cover everything the rest of my life. And then, when I was 13, I had my first wet dream. So I went right back into the book. Milky discharge, milky discharge, milky discharge, milky discharge, milky. Gonorrhea! I was in shock, I mean, gonorrhea! Before I even started, I was terrified. I couldn't tell my mother I had gonorrhea. So the book said to drink a lot of water. Is that all the book said? No, take penicillin, strepto, something or another. But I couldn't do any of that unless if I told somebody. So all I could do was drink the water, and I drank like 20 glasses a day for three weeks. I almost drowned. Then I went to confession, and I told the priest that I had gonorrhea, and he was in shock too. <laughs> Who have you been with, my son? Nobody. Nobody! <laughs> then how can you have gonorrhea? <laughs> well, I told the book's diagnosis for milky discharge, and he set me straight. I think that's the only time church has ever helped me out. <laughs> well, I was. Bye. 
was absurd. But I thought to myself, hey, it's only the second week. Maybe it's genetic. They don't have bobsleds in San Juan. Second week, more advanced than we had. Be a table, be a sports car, ice cream cone. Mr. Card, he would say, very good. Lola? They all wanted to know what the story was. 
So I told him about this big hot romance we were having, right? Well, in reality, she was going with this. A little brat! That's what my sister was! A little brat! And that's why I shaved your head! I'm glad I shaved your head! But then my father lost his job, so we had to leave El Paso, and we wound up in St. Louis, Missouri. Well, it was the furthest thing from my mind to be a dancer, but my mother would embarrass me. So when she got to pick me up and throw it all those raving yells, throw it in the air, no matter how much I met her, and she'd say, What?
and I thought, shit, 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 what are you going to be? But they weren't good enough. 
Of course, what he was trying to say it was the way I looked, not the pancakes. So I said, screw you, Radio City, you rockets. I'm going to dance on Broadway. Well, Broadway, same story. I mean, every audition, I dance rings around the other girls and still end up in the alley with the other rejects. But after a while, I caught on. I mean, I saw what they were hiring. I also swiped my dance card after an audition once, and on a scale of 10, they gave me, for dance, 10, for looks, 3. Well, dance 10, looks 3, and I'm still on unemployment, dancing for my own enjoyment. That ain't a kid, that ain't a kid. Dance 10, looks 3, is like to die. Left the theater and called the doctor for my appointment to find this and that. Bought myself a fancy pair, tightened up the derriere, did the nose with it, all that goes with it, this and that. Got the bingo bongos done, suddenly I'm getting national tours. This and that won't get you just unless. Get the straight losers. Beggars really can't be choosers. That ain't a kid. That ain't a kid. Thinks the chassis. What do you do? Life turned into an endless medley of gee, it had to be you. Why this and that? Where the cover once was bare. Now you're not getting someone fair. You have got to pay top to bottom. Hey, it's a gag. Just an act of silver. Take your new maracas and your mind. This and that will change your life. They should. Doing 
really have to talk about that? Why, why do we have to talk about that? Lori, can I please sit down? Yeah, Zach, can my kids sit down now? <laughs> and smoke? Can the adults please smoke now, please? Yeah, everybody can have a break out in the hall. <laughs> Paul, we'll try this again later, okay? Um, Cassie, could you stay on the stage, please? Well, this audition is really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. What are you doing here? What do you think? I need a job. <laughs> the chorus? Zach, I'd love a part of chorus, but I'll take what I can get. You're too good for the chorus, Cassie. Too good? And I don't want dance parts, so what? But what? You were featured, you stopped two shows cold. Look, your career was going fine here in New York. I can't get a job, Zach. God, you sound like all my friends, my fans. I feel like I'm some star and I don't know when the truth is I never even came close. And nobody has the guts to tell me. It would be nice to be a star, but I'm not. I'm a dancer. Give me somebody to dance for. Give me somebody to show. Let me wake up in the morning to find I have somewhere exciting to go. Okay, look, you're going through a slow period. It happens to everyone. Something you know, will happen. And that's what I kept telling myself in California. And I kept telling myself that and telling myself that. Well, nothing will happen. I can't act. <coughs> I can't act. And now you're in California you're supposed to be this actress. But it didn't take me long to figure out that I can't act. Didn't take Hollywood long either. Did you work out there? Sure. I got a right part in a so-so film. Part ended up getting cut, thank God. I was a go-go dancer in the TV and movie of the week. Let's see. Commercials. I almost got to squeeze a roll of toilet paper. But I lost out in finals. Isn't that something? 17 years in the business and I flunked out of toilet paper squeezing. I was dancing band-aid. That was fun. We had an earthquake. I got a terrific tan and you must have heard about Yeah, I did hear that you were going out with some big agent. Running around, carrying on, being a bit wild. Well, when you're a woman of leisure, what am I going to do but run around and get a bit wild? Not to mention getting fat. You're going crazy. Which is why I came back to New York. Why I'm here today. Zach, old dear, little pussy cat, I need a job. To have something that I can believe in, to have something to be. Dancing in the chorus, Cassie. Why not? Look, if you want money, just call my business manager. Well, sure, I need money. But I don't need a handout. I need a job. I need a job, and I don't know how to say it. Do you want me to say it again? No. Good. Then we got that far. Look, I haven't worked in two years. Not really. And there's nowhere else for me to go. So I'm putting myself on the line. I'm putting myself on the line. I don't want to wait tables. And what I really don't want to do is teach other people what I should be doing myself. God, I'm a dancer. A dancer dances. Give me somebody to dance with. Give me a place to fit in. Help me return to the world of the living by showing me how to begin.
Yes, Paul. 
Listen, I really like the way you dance. No, I'm serious. So I figured we'd try this again. Um, for one thing, if you're going to change your name, why go from a Puerto Rican one to an Italian name? Because I don't look it. I mean, people told me all the time, you don't look Puerto Rican, you don't look Puerto Rican. So I changed it. So then you figured you looked Italian? <laughs> no, I... I just wanted to become somebody new. So I became Paul San Marco. Well, what did you want to become somebody new? <laughs> well, I'm not exactly proud of my past. Well, who gives, but that's what the word means, Paul. Ah. Yeah, that might be easy for you okay. to say. Wait a minute. Um, what made you start dancing? Your parents? <laughs> what Puerto Ricans know about musical theater? All they have is Channel 47. And they didn't have anything. But my father loved movies, and he would take us all the time. He would work late at nights, and he'd come home, and he would take us to 42nd Street, and we'd go in one movie and out to another, and I don't know. I, I like movie musicals. How old were you? Seven or eight. On 42nd Street. Yeah. It was a trip. Okay, go on. Well, I couldn't exactly see the screen. So I would have to move up to the front. Oh, I wear contact lenses now, but at the time I didn't wear anything, and I would have to move up to the front, and these strange men would come and sit beside me, and I, I didn't tell anyone. I, I didn't think it mattered. Why didn't it matter? Why? Um, okay, look, Paul, if this is too rough for you, I have your... No, 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 no! No. <laughs> That's okay. From seeing all those movie musicals, I love dancing in the street, and I would get caught all the time. God, it was, it was embarrassing. I was always trying to be Sid Charisse, which, which didn't make sense at the time because I just wanted to be an actor. But my cousin told me, you'll never be an actor. I knew she was telling me this because I was such a sissy. I mean, I was terribly effeminate. I always knew I was gay, but that's not what bothered me. What bothered me was that I didn't know how to be a boy. So one day I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, You're 14 years old and you're a... And you're queer. What are you going to do with your life? At the time I was going to Cardinal Hayes High School and there were nearly 3,000 boys there. I, I had no protection. I couldn't be charming in homeroom with all the tough guys who would fight my battles for me, not like in the other schools I went to. I liked school, but my grades just got so low. I mean, every time I knew the answer, I still wouldn't raise my hand because I was afraid that everyone would laugh at me and make fun of me. I mean, they whistled at me in the hallways. It was awful. Just all. Well, I, I finally went down to my principal and I said, I'm a homosexual. Well, it was a Catholic school at the time. And at the age of 15, you didn't just say that. He asked me, Would you like to see a psychologist? And I did. And then he told me, I think you're very well adjusted for your age, and I think you should quit school. So I did. I mean, I, 
I didn't want to. I, I just couldn't take it. See, when I quit school, what I was really trying to do was to figure out how to be a man. Since then, I figured out that, well, I am one. You know, there's a lot of people in this world that don't actually know how to be a man. And I was doing it all wrong. I was just trying to be butch. Well, anyway, I started hanging around 72nd Street with all these really freaky people. But I was only doing it just to figure out what exactly that I was. Well, I heard the Jewel Box Review was holding auditions for the drive show. And so I went. Oh, from all those times I danced in the street and acting like Sid Sharice, I had this fabulous extension. I mean, I could turn anything my first audition. But the producers came up to me and said, you're too lanky to be a boy. Would you like to be a pony? Well, what's that? A girl. What would I have to do? They asked, show us your legs. I have hair on my legs. That's okay, they said. Come upstairs with us. So I went upstairs and they hiked up these dungarees and high heels and nylon stockings. <laughs> It was freaky. It was amazing. Well, anyway, I, I followed them back downstairs, and the producers looked at me and said, Oh my, you have wonderful legs. And I said, Really? Terrific. You know, thinking about all this is so bizarre. I mean, this was all a lifetime ago. I was, I was just barely 16 years old. <laughs> oh, but then there was this thing about hiding it from my parents, because I'd have to bring home all this stuff, high heels, makeup, earrings, all of it. My mother would find it. So I had to lie. I, I told her that there's a girl in the show, and she doesn't want her parents finding out, so I'm holding it for her. She believed me. Well, there I was. Finally, I was in show business. I mean, it was the asshole of show business, but it was a job. But after a while, things just got so demeaning. I had friends, but none of them had any dignity, and they all just called themselves freaks, and I, I don't know, I, I guess that all just caught up to me, and so I left. Oh, I, I muddled around for a while, I, I was a busboy, I was a waiter, but without an education, it's really tough to find a job. So when the jewel box called me and asked if I'd come back, I won. I won. Well, we were doing shows at the Apollo Theater on 125th Street. We were doing four shows a day with a movie, and we were just about to go on tour. So my parents wanted to come by and drop off my luggage and say goodbye after the show. After. Well, we were. We were doing this oriental number, and I looked like anime Wong. I mean, I had these great big chrysanthemums on either side of my head, and this huge headdress with gold balls hanging off of it. Well, as I was going down the stairs for the finale, you know what I see standing by the doors? My parents.
there. They got there way too early. And I freaked. I, I didn't know what to do. My mind was rushing. So I thought, I know, I'll just walk past them quickly, just like everyone else, and they'll never notice me. So I took a deep breath. I started down the stairs. And just as I passed my mother, I heard her say, Oh my God. Oh. She died. I, I mean, who wouldn't? But I had to keep going for the finale. So I went and I finished off, but I went upstairs to get changed take off all my makeup. I went back downstairs and I saw my parents standing with all of these. They walked up to me and they, they said, please write. Make sure you eat. And take care of yourself. And then my father walked up to the producers. And he said, please take care of my son. Yeah. 
Um, after the great bar's death, did the hat come down on two? Yeah, hat's down on two. Um, well, when does the hat come up? On six. Five, six. Now, Glory has the exact style of one before. Very, uh, 30. Do this. A five, six, seven, eight, a one.
How can you do it? Okay, you got out of the course when you were 22. What the hell makes you think you can go back when you're 32? My sanity. Cassie, you can't do it. But I did. I pulled in, I told it, I danced like everybody else. Yeah, I know. I know. And to be perfectly honest, I couldn't stand it. You know, that's your problem. Why? Because you took me out of the course in the first place? Does that make you feel like some kind of failure? Why did you leave me? So we are going to get into that. Why did you leave me? I came home one night and you were gone. Why did that you notice? Very funny. You already left me weeks before. Last? I thought we were living together. Shipping an apartment, maybe. No, in the real sense of the word, left. You left. Well, you were madly in love again. And I wasn't. You know what? I wasn't. I was just directing my first play. And you were in love with it. And I'll be the only world that needs anything to you. You know how important that was to me. Christ! If I direct a straight play and pull it off, it meant I wasn't going to be making up dance moves the rest of my life. You were never going to be making up dance moves the rest of your life. You were going to make sure you did it all. Direct, choreograph, plays, movies, musicals. You know, I knew you loved your work, but you really get off on it, don't you? Yeah, I guess I do, but... Look, you didn't seem to mind it when we were working together. It only was when we were... I didn't mind not being a part of your work. I loved you, I couldn't handle that. It's not being a part of your life that got to me. And not being able to keep up with you, which is what you wanted and knew you did. You were on your way up and you wanted me to be right up there with you. Well, I was a good dancer, but you wanted me to be a star. Help with that. Look, why shouldn't you be? Why shouldn't you be the best you can be? Look, when I got out of the course, I told myself that's that- That's not decision, that's disease. God, good, better, best, I hate it. How can you stand it? Are you gonna go from one show to the next, to the next? directing and choreographing 24 hours a day for the rest of your life. And you know you're not even doing it for yourself, you're doing it to prove something like I was. I was trying to prove it to you, to keep you, to sleep, to get you back. But I don't want to prove anything anymore. I want to do what I love as much as I can for as long as I can. But at least now I'm doing it for me. What are you doing it for? What? Yeah, I am. Good. Then don't feel like you owe me anything. Just treat me like everybody else. Look, is this what you want from me, huh? Is this what you really want to do?
In Christ, I just get this feeling inside. Because I remember when I used to watch all those girls come out of that stage door with their makeup and their eyelashes. And I think to myself, I'll never be that old. I'll never be that old. I'll never be old enough to come out of that stage door. But I have. And gosh darn it, I've made it this far and I'm not giving up now. That's what I used to say. I'd say I've got to be a ballerina by the time I'm 18. And then I find out I should be a musical comedy. Okay, fine, I'll be a chorus girl. But I've got to be playing parts by the time I'm 21. You did that too? Give yourself a time? <laughs> I still do it. Exactly. And then you're 25 and you say just a couple more years. Well, hell, I'm 30. I mean, how many years left do I have to be a chorus beauty? Three, four? I mean, maybe if I get my eyes done, but I don't feel like dealing on that level any longer. And just recently, I've been thinking maybe I'll open up my own dance studio. I don't know. Is that coming out? Am I growing up? I just don't know. And that's it. Who does know anything? It's just something you're going to have to figure out. Right. But if today were the day and you had to stop dancing, how would you feel? Kiss today, goodbye. Sweetness and sorrow. Wish me luck the same.
Okay. Before I start eliminating, um, I just want to thank you all. You're all terrific, and you've been wonderful about going through all this today. I sincerely wish I could hire all of you, but I can't. Um, with that being said, will the following people please step forward? Don. Greg. Al. Diane. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Back in line. Okay, Christine. Bibi. Sheila. Connie. And Maggie. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. I'm sorry. Rehearsals begin September 22nd. We'll have six weeks of rehearsal with a two-month out-of-town tryout. Our New York opening will be sometime mid-January. <laughs> You'll be prepared to sign a standard minimum contract with a six-month writer. You'll be contacted as to where and when you'll sign it, and I am very glad to be working with you all.
Yes, it is. I'm here with Megan Arters. Megan Arters, if you were a, uh, what is your favorite kind of cookie? Uh, chocolate chip. What was the hardest part about taking on this role? Knowing that I, it was my last one. <laughs> Does that make sense? That makes a lot of okay. sense. <laughs> I forget the other questions. What's the other questions? Um, they're on my phone. <laughs> Besides this one, what was your favorite show? Well, this entire season kind of rocked for me. I would say um, Avita, because I didn't actually have to dye my hair blonde to do that one. And what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Shit, that's theater. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. <laughs> interview you. Oh, really? Yes. All right. I'm here with Ben Murphy. Ben Murphy, what's your favorite line of dialogue from this show? I'd be hard. What was the biggest challenge about taking on this role in a chorus line? Uh, I can't dance, so I had to learn how to do that. That was hard. And besides this one, what was your favorite show? Rent. And what is your favorite kind of cookie? Chocolate chip. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, okay, boy. yes. Pressure is on. All right. I am here with Cecilia Michelli. Cecilia, what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Um, probably the most awkward that I had, which was asking Evan if I could sit on his lap. What was the biggest challenge about taking on this role? Um, honestly, probably flirting with Evan. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Love you, bud. But. All right. Besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done in high school? I've got to say Rent. Rent was a lot of fun. And what is your favorite kind of cookie? I'm going to go classic chocolate chip, but like mushy, not chew, not crunchy, yeah. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, Maddie. <laughs> Press. Okay. All right. Sorry. I'm here with McKenna Mink. McKenna, what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Uh, probably 44. <laughs> Um, what was the biggest challenge about taking on this role? Um, it was really hard to balance the cross and this and a job, but it, I worked it out, so it's all good. <laughs> Besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done? Um, probably Footloose or Rent. And what was your what is your favorite kind of cookie? Favorite kind of cookie? Yes. Uh, chocolate chip. <laughs> Thank you, McKenna. You want to be interviewed? All right, all right, all right. All right. I'm here with Lauren Devine. Hi. Lauren, what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Yes. Uh, I'd be hard. <laughs> what was the biggest challenge about taking on this role? Um, not being able to sing. Besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done in high school? Probably Legally Blonde because I was a lesbian and my first one, Little Mermaid. <laughs> and no, the most important question, what is your favorite kind of cookie? Chocolate chip for the win, for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> Evan, I'm going to interview you. Okay. All right. I'm here with Evan Vandenbrill. Hi. Evan, what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Hmm. Uh, let's see. That's a hard one. Probably tonight, that ending line. The, Which one? Say it. I know. The, and, and I'm very glad to be working with you all. That was really sad. Okay, what was the biggest challenge about taking on this role? The lines. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Right. And besides this one, what was your favorite role you played in high school? Ooh, um, that's tough. Favorite role, that might... Probably Tom Collins, yeah. And most importantly, what's your favorite kind of cookie? Uh, Snickerdoodle. Thank you, Evan. Mike, do you want to be next? Absolutely. I would All love right. to be next. I'm here with Mike Jones. Mike Jones, what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Oh, my God. Favorite line of dialogue, probably it was, and then everyone started calling me Twinkle Toes. Because the guy always gets a nice laugh. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what was the biggest challenge about taking on this role? Oh, my God. I definitely, without a doubt, the tap dancing. I, I came into the show not having a lick of tap dancing and I, came, I, I went to, to Miss Gina's uh, studio, you know, a couple times after that and then, you know, just magic happened from there and then I suddenly became a tap dancer. So, without a doubt, the tap dancing. Besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done? Oh, In the Heights, easily. In the Heights was one of my favorite shows of all time and, you know, I think it really just set me off as an as a actor and as a performer and, you know, you know I, I just had so many memories from that show that I would, that I would never want to take back, so. 
Yeah. Most importantly, what's your favorite kind of cookie? Oh, chocolate chip all day, boy. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Hey, Mason, can I borrow you? Uh, I'm going to interview you. Interview? Yes. I'm here with Mason Miller. What's up? Mason, what was your favorite line of dialogue from the show? I'd be hard. What was the biggest challenge about taking on this role? A specific role? This, this role. Well, for me personally, it was just the fact that I play baseball at the same time, so I didn't really have that much time to learn my stuff, but that's what I'd say. And besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done? Avita. All right. And what's your favorite kind of cookie? Snickerdoodle. Thank you, Mason. interview you. Okay, cool. right. I'm here with Ben Micholi. Ben, what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Oh, wow. Um, that's such a hard question. There's so many good ones. Uh, probably the boobs one. Boobs. Where are my boobs? That's got to be a classic. <laughs> I mean, come on. You can't not love that one. All right. um, what was the biggest challenge about taking on this part? Oh, uh, well, there's a lot of different challenges. This part specifically was the first time where I really uh, developed my acting rather than singing. Because most shows I sing, this one I had 11 minutes to myself on a stage where I had to act. And that was three pages worth of lines that I memorized. And that was, pro that was the toughest part. Besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done in high school? Hands down, Rent. Rent was... Unbelievable. One of the only shows where I felt connected to every single person in the cast, and I will forever cherish those memories from that show. All right. And most importantly, what's your favorite kind of cookie? Oh, God. Uh, snickerdoodle. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. you. All, right. All right. Let me pull my questions. Okay. All right. I'm so sweaty. Uh, it's okay. I'm here with Gavin Poole. Gavin. What was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Probably, I'd be hard. Or, or gonorrhea. All right. What was the biggest challenge about taking on this role? The dancing. The dancing was insanely difficult. It was really, it was really hard. Besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done? Evita, by far. And most importantly, what's your favorite kind of cookie? Uh, snickerdoodles. You can never go wrong with a good snickerdoodle. Thank you, Gavin. I'm here with Chase Brennan. Chase, what was your favorite line of dialogue from the show? Um, guys, <laughs> pants. <laughs> All right. What was the biggest challenge taking on this role had for you? I mean, I was just playing myself, so... <laughs> Besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done in high school? Um, either In the Heights or Legally Blonde. And most importantly, what's your favorite kind of cookie? I guess chocolate chip or peanut butter. Thank you, Chase. Okay, I'm here with Ava LaRue. Ava, what is your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Um, I don't know how I turned out as heavenly as I did. All right. Uh, what was the biggest challenge about playing this role in a chorus line? Learning the dances, for sure. Um, besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done in high school? Definitely Rent. And most importantly, what is your favorite kind of cookie? Chocolate chip, classic. All right. Thank you, Ava. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm here with Lainey Boschman. Lainey, what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Um... Probably. Wait, sorry. <laughs> um, I remember that line of dialogue. Um, I like that part where he's like, "Give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball." Yeah, I enjoy that. That's okay. a jam. Right. Yeah. And what was the hardest part about taking on this role in a chorus line? Um, I think it was probably uh, the whole like going up and like intentionally singing bad. Uh, it was, <laughs> actually that wasn't that hard at all. I was pretty good at that, I noticed. Um, yeah, hitting all the wrong notes was like, it was pretty natural for me. Yeah, I had a good time, it was good.
And besides this one, what was your favorite show you've done in high school? Uh, probably Bye Bye Birdie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, thank you. And most importantly, what's your favorite kind of cookie? Um, probably white chocolate macadamia. Thank you, Lainey. You're welcome. Thank you. Did you All right. I'm here with David Anderson. David, what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? Um, probably, uh, I don't know. I, I want to say one of the gonorrhea lines. Yeah, yeah. Good one. What was the biggest challenge in taking on this role? Um, probably just not being awkward on stage like I normally am and like actually acting like gay and confident. Yep. <laughs> nice. And besides this one, what is your favorite show you've done in high school? In the Heights. Yeah. And finally, what is your favorite kind of cookie? Um, chocolate chip. Thank you, David. I'm here with Jillian Umstead. Jillian, what was your favorite line of dialogue from this show? My favorite line of dialogue. Oh my gosh. If you'd asked me during the show, I would have known. Um, probably had to be... Oh, I can't remember who said it. Just say the line. I can't remember what it was. Oh my god. Do you want to come back to this question? Yes, we can come back to this question. Okay, what was the biggest challenge you had with this show? Um, probably getting all of the lighting done in time. And besides this one, what is your favorite show you've done in high school? Avita. And what is your favorite kind of cookie? Chocolate chip. Definitely chocolate chip. Have you figured out your favorite line? Uh, T-Bone says I should say gonorrhea. Thank you, Julian. And T-Bone.